Good day, grade 10s. In this lesson, we will learn about the factors that affect resistance. Let us start with what resistance is measured in. The unit of resistance is the ohm. And the symbol for the ohm is the Greek letter omega. An ohm is defined as 1 volt per ampere. Let us write that down. An ohm equals 1 volt per ampere. This is actually Ohm's law, but you will learn more about that in grade 11. Remember that resistance is defined as the opposition to the flow of charge in a circuit. Therefore, we can use current as a measure of the resistance in a circuit. Since resistance is the opposition to flow of charge, it makes sense that the bigger the current, the smaller the resistance. And the smaller the current, the larger the resistance. Let us now join Bruce as he does an experiment to determine one of the factors that affect resistance in a circuit. I will set up the circuit using one cell. So let me place one cell into the circuit and complete the connection, like that. I have chosen the number of cells as my independent variable. That means it's the variable that I can control. The current which is going to depend on the number of cells, is known as the dependent variable. And I will measure the current using the ammeter. I must ensure that all conditions and variables remain the same. And this will ensure that I have a fair test. I will now close the switch to complete the circuit. Note that the ammeter reading is stabilizing at round about 4.2 amperes. So now let's enter that reading onto our table. 4,2 amperes. Notice that I've now put two cells into the electrical circuit. Let me once again close the circuit and we notice that the ammeter reading has stabilized at about 6.2. So now let's write that in. For two cells we have a current reading of 6,2 amperes. I've now put three cells into my electrical circuit. I close the switch and the reading is 8.2 amperes. Now let's tabulate that. Using three cells, our current reading is 8,2 amperes. Did you notice that the current increased as I increased the number of cells in the circuit? Can you see that the more cells we have in series, it means the greater the amount of electrical energy is provided and the current will increase. But will this relationship always be true? Are there other variables that could influence our results? Let us choose another type of material, and this time I will choose a length of nichrome wire. We have to make sure that the length and thickness of the nichrome wire is the same as that of the copper, otherwise we will not have a fair test. Right, we are now repeating the experiment using the nichrome wire. There I have my one cell in my electrical circuit. I now close the switch, and my ammeter is reading about 1 ampere. So let's record that. One cell is giving us a reading of one ampere. Now I've placed two cells into my electrical circuit. I close my switch and I get a reading of approximately 1,4 amperes. So back to our table, two cells gives us a reading of approximately 1,4 amperes. Here we have three cells in my electrical circuit. Closing the switch, a reading of 2 amperes. So let's record that result. 3 cells is giving us a reading of 2 amperes. Now let us compare the results we have just obtained for these two materials. Here I have tabulated the results for copper and nichrome onto a nice neat table for you. Can you see clearly that if we look at the current readings for copper and nichrome for one cell, for two cells, and for three cells, that the copper allows a far greater current to pass through than the nichrome wire. These results show that the thin copper wire carries a much higher current than the thin nichrome wire. Both the thin copper and the thin nichrome wire had exactly the same length and diameter. The only difference between the first experiment and the second experiment was the type of material used. And we could see clearly that copper was able to conduct electrical current better than nichrome wire. We are now able to draw conclusions about the ability 
of copper and nichrome to conduct electrical current. We call this conductivity. Looking at these results, we can see that copper is a better conductor than nichrome. In other words, copper has a higher conductivity than nichrome wire. In that experiment, we saw that the nichrome wire allowed through less current than the copper wire. Therefore, we can conclude that one of the factors that affect resistance is the nature of the material. Let's join Bruce as he performs another experiment to investigate what else affects resistance in a circuit. I'm going to ask you this question. Does the thickness of the wire affect the results? I am now going to repeat this experiment, but instead of using thin copper wire in this gap over here, I've placed a much thicker piece of copper wire. I'm going to start by using one cell, and I'm going to close the switch, and we can see that our current reading is reading round about 5.8 amperes. So for our thicker copper wire using one cell, we have a reading of 5,8 amperes. Now I've placed my two cells into my electrical circuit, closing the switch, and we have a reading of about 7,8. So for two cells in series, we have a reading of approximately 7,8 amperes. Right, now we have three cells in series. I close the switch, and a reading that's gone just about off the scale, but approximates at 10 amperes. So for three cells in series, my current reading is 10 amperes. So let's now compare the results that we got for our thin copper wire compared to the results we've just obtained for our thick copper wire. Looking at the results of the two pieces of copper wire, we find that the thicker copper wire conducts a larger current than the thinner copper wire. So the diameter of the wire affects its ability to conduct electrical current. We can therefore see that the greater the cross-section or the thickness of the wire, the easier it is for the current to flow. Thus, the thinner the wire, the greater the resistance. We will again visit Bruce as he investigates another factor that affects resistance. Now is there anything else we could change to allow us to investigate the flow of electric current through a conductor? Well, what about changing the length of the conductor? If I kept the material the same, kept the same number of cells in the circuit, and kept the thickness of the conductor exactly the same as well, then we would have a fair test to investigate the changing length of the conducting material. Let's do the experiment. Here I have a one meter length of nichrome wire, which has been folded up and placed onto this wooden board. On each end of the board, you will see some silver terminals. These silver terminals will allow us to adjust the length of the wire. The distance between each terminal is represented by 25 centimeters. So I can now adjust the length of the nichrome wire by 25 centimeters at a time. Here I've connected the nichrome wire to the one meter position. I will now close the switch and we can see on our new scale on the ammeter that our reading is 0, 0,18 amperes. So if we go to our table with our length of nichrome wire at 1 meter, our current reading was 0, 0,18 amperes. I have now moved the connecting lead from the 1 meter position to the 0, 0,75 meter position. I will now close the switch and we can see that the ammeter is reading 0, 0,2 amperes. So for our length of nichrome wire at 0, 0,75 meters, our current read 0, 0,2 amperes. Right, I've now moved the lead to the 0, 0,5 meter position. I close the switch and the ammeter is now reading 0, 0,3 amperes. So for our third reading of 0, 0,5 meters, my current was 0, 0,3 amperes. For my last reading, I've moved it to the 0, 0,25 meter position, closed the switch, and I can see my ammeter is reading approximately 0, 0,55 amperes. So for my last reading of 0, 0,25 meters, my current reading is 0, 0,55 amperes. So what can we conclude from these results? 
can you see that as the length of Nick Chrome wire gets smaller, that the current reading is actually increasing? We can therefore see that the longer the conductor, the greater the resistance. Now there is one more factor that affects the resistance of a conductor, temperature. To understand how temperature affects how current flows, let's look at an animation. When the wire is heated, all the particles in the wire gain kinetic energy. This means that all the particles start to vibrate faster. These particles now get in the way of the electrons as they try to flow through the wire and slow them down. This means that the current, which is the rate of flow, will be lower or we can say that the resistance will increase when the wire is heated. So in summary, we can say that a short, thick, cold wire makes the best conductor since it will have the least resistance, and that a long, thin, hot wire has the greatest resistance. You will find more information on resistance in circuits at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Goodbye.